Okay, good morning. Yeah, um, I called this meeting because um, we just received our recent um, scores from HCAPS and um, it seems that we have not been doing well for the last quarter. Um, we dropped probably like 8% from the last time we, did, we had that survey. So um, I really don't know what's happening, but it seems that we've getting, been getting more complaints from patients and patients' family. And um, we've been getting less of the Star Recognition Awards. So uh, personally, I think um, we're just losing the essence of nursing. And um, I would like to hear all of your, for your suggestions and what can we do to improve our scores for the next quarter. You know, that's really disappointing because our staff works yeah. so hard. True. And, but you know, looking back, I do realize that they are kind of focused on just the task at hand versus kind of building rapport with the patient and the family. So maybe that's yeah. why we... I've noticed that too. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know, let's try to review and go back how, you know, nursing has started, you know. Um, we have this nursing theorist, and I don't think a lot of our nursing staff are, you know, very involved and um, educated or informed about these theorists. So um, they've always been the foundation of our current practices, and even the you know new guidelines are evidence-based uh, practice or the guidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what, I, I, I saw a video uh, that I've been wanting to show you. I think it will fit into this uh, problem we have right now. Okay, it's about uh, theories Peplau and Abdella. Actually, it's Peplau's interpersonal theory and Abdella's patient-centered care. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I have it with me here, okay, so I can show it to you. That would be great. Oh, lucky me, it's here, okay? There you go, let's show it, okay? Alright, let's play that video. Nursing health care. It is a diverse field. Constantly pushing to the merit of perfection. Nursing, compared to other professions, has specific attributes in itself. The approach to care is quite unique in nursing. It makes nursing profession different from others in the healthcare field. Navigation done by single individuals constantly differ. And that's where the nursing theories sprout. Nursing theories may have different views on how patient care should be delivered, but they have one common goal, IT is to provide the highest quality of health care for patients. But why is it significant to nursing practice? It's important because it provides a framework for nursing practice, education and administration, and provides professional boundaries, grounding nursing as an independent profession. And who are the theorists that made a huge contribution to it? There is Hildegard Peplau, who is regarded as the mother of psychiatric nursing. She was a seasoned healthcare professional with an MA in psychiatric nursing and honorary doctorates. Her theory of interpersonal relationship was especially groundbreaking, stressing the importance of the nurse-client dynamic. Peplau formed the seven nursing roles and the developmental stages of the nurse-client relationship. Both parties the nurse and the patient, sharing their values and beliefs will create an interpersonal bond that will stimulate health and well-being. That interaction would be very beneficial in the formation of the patient's recovery plan. But it is a theory that would not work very efficiently on patients who are unconscious, and we also have Faye Abdella. She was the first woman to be a deputy surgeon general. A well-known figure in modern medicine, she has held several professions in the medical field. Her crowning achievement is her list of 21 common nursing problems. Abdella's work is a set of problems formulated in terms of nursing-centered services, which are used to determine the patient's needs. These nursing theorists both have their focus on how nursing can improve the patient's highest quality of life. Whether it is the use of Abdella's theory or Peplos, nurses should be able to choose the optimum approach. The two theories fall into the QSEN standards and competencies. The Quality and Safety Education for Nurses or QSEN project was created on 2005 and the main goal up to now is to meet the hard tasks of preparing the aspiring nurses that would have the knowledge, good skills and also attitudes that are important to help improve the quality and safety of the healthcare systems in a continuous context where they work. There are six Quality and Safety Education for Nurses competencies. First one, Patient-Centered Care. 
recognize the patient or designee as the source of control and full partner in providing compassionate and coordinated care based on respect for patient's preferences, values, and needs. The second competency is teamwork and collaboration. Function effectively within nursing and interprofessional teams, fostering open communication, mutual respect, and shared decision-making to achieve quality patient care. The third competency is evidence-based practice. Integrate best current evidence with clinical expertise and patient, family preferences and values for delivery of optimal health care. The fourth competency is quality improvement. Use data to monitor the outcomes of care processes and use improvement methods to design and test changes to continuously improve the quality and safety of health care systems. The fifth competency is safety. Minimizes risk of harm to patients and providers through both system effectiveness and individual performance. And the sixth competency is informatics. Use information and technology to communicate, manage knowledge, mitigate error, and support decision making. Let's go through each of the QSEN's competencies. How are you, Miss Edison? Do you feel better now? Yes, Nurse Oliver, thank you for the excellent care that you've provided. It helped a lot with my recovery. I am more than happy to take care of you, Miss Addison. We only want the best for your health. Patient-centeredness was a staple in Peplos' theory. She had claimed that a solid relationship was helpful to the healing process. A common goal between the patient and nurse is a therapeutic incentive. While Abdella explains, that there should be an equal balance to the tending of patient's needs, the quality of patient service, and the duties of a nurse. Hi, I was talking with Dr. Dobritz about this patient and looks like he will be needing placement for rehab. Yes, thanks for calling me. I actually wanted to talk to you about that. I'll go there and we can discuss it with the patient. In correlation to the QSEN standard of teamwork and collaboration. Abdella and Peplo require a good flow of communication. The two theories were designed to respect the patient's needs, while balancing nursing orientation and interaction of patients, to better recognize the patient's health needs. Our policy has been updated regarding blood glucose management. We are switching to insulin Lispro from regular insulin. Dosing for prandial dosing will be calculated by weight by the pharmacy with the sliding scale. It should be given before the patient eats. Studies show this strategy is more effective in stabilizing blood glucose levels in acute care setting. Both theorists utilized the most current best practices during their time and developed new practices in their career. Up to now, research studies are still being done focusing on Peplos' theory of interpersonal relations and Abdella's patient-centered approaches theory. Hi Mary, can you double-check the call measure sheet with me before I discharge my patient? Diagnosis of myocardial infarction. Patient is on lisinopril and tap blockers. Okay, let me take a look. Well, everything looks good. Thanks for checking with me. I just want to make sure it doesn't fall out of core measures. To Abdella, quality improvement is obtained through preventative measures, promoting good health, creating a therapeutic environment and further facilitating the needs of patient. With the use of Abdella's 21 nursing problems and counterbalancing skills list, the diagnostic process is timely and accurate. It was studied and thoroughly researched that an effective communication between patients and nurses lead to anxiety, depression and noticeable decline in health. By utilizing Peplos' theory of therapeutic communication, it stimulated a fast recovery and an increase in overall patient satisfaction. Good morning Miss Georgia. My name is Dan and I will be your nurse this morning. If you need anything please let us know. Please use the call light if you need us. I don't want you getting out of bed by yourself as you're not yet steady on your feet. I want to make sure you're safe. Oh thank you, Dan. I will. You're very welcome, Miss Georgia. I will leave you for now so you can rest. In Abdella and Peplos theories, it shows that patients are both valued and cared for. Pepla motivated the improvement of the nursing practice by overcoming the management of anxiety. She educated her staff and colleagues in safety, a concept that had spread nationally and globally. Hi everyone, I would like to welcome our new nursing informatics coordinator, Mr. Stevens. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you all. 
I'm so excited to work with you especially with our new software. We must keep up with technology and use them to our advantage. Nurse Informatics gives more information, improving quality, safety and efficiency of care. It also supports various areas of nursing practice, like a work lists of planned nursing interventions, a system-generated client documentation, and easier way to bill for supplies or procedures. It can also automate staff scheduling and email for improved communication in nursing administration. And one of the best advantage of the new system is for nursing education. Informatics and communication played a prominent role in both theories. Abdella believed that informatics should be accurate and timely as it is crucial in managing patients, while Peplaw emphasized the importance of continuing advancements to communication using informatics to improve the nurse-patient relationship. Nurses must be able to analyze which theory suits best for both their patients and nursing practice. Oh, that was a really good book. Oh, wow. Uh, I really like it. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah I was really impressed the first time I saw it. So I, I wanted to share it with you. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thanks. Yeah. Thank Very you informative. It, yeah. So um yeah, while well, watching the video, I realized we have some like important points that we need to address um, mm -hmm. with regards to you know what we could implement um, on our floors to improve their satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write down um, so that we could share it with I could share it with you guys and give, just give your opinion on it. Okay, sure. And yeah. you can share. For practice, you know, uh, from the video, like um, Abdella was talking about patient-centered and how she's focused on patient-centered nursing approaches, um, we should just make, um, you know, do an education day or something with our forum say, um, to help our nurses remind the importance of, you know, patient-centered care and how it's important for them to be included in the plan of care. Um, let's be uh, more attentive to the patients and their families, you know, instead of just focusing on the tasks, like what you were saying earlier, the, you know, our staff's more um, task-oriented instead of giving time to their patients and the families. And um, the other theorist, which is Peplo, she was talking about how it's very important to have a good nurse-patient relationship yeah, so perfect. that, because um, it helps with the healing process. So, I mean, we just have to get that message through, throughout our nursing staff, right? Okay. Yeah. Point. Getting the message across to our staff, mm -hmm. that would be a part of education. Yeah. Right. So it, it would be a nice idea to show this video to our present staff. And we could use also this material to bring new hires and the new grads, because uh, it will be a good uh, message for them to put this into their practice. And then as far as research, I was thinking, you know how we're going to be using the whiteboard, the new whiteboard yes. with the patients and the families, we can do like a research study, yeah, and then see right. how that works out, and yeah. see that increases our patient satisfaction. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, because I think I, I saw the whiteboards and they just rolled out, um, I think, start of last week, yeah. and they're really nice, you know, to use yeah. for communicating, um, yeah. like, the plan of care to the family and right. the patients, and they can actually write on it, too, yeah. not Post just questions us. if yeah. you want, because sometimes messages. you forget, yeah. especially if you're a patient, you're thinking about many other things, yeah. Yeah. So you can just post a question, a concern, mm -hmm. and then we can come back to it. Yeah. Okay. But so that sounds like a plan. Great. Okay, so thank you guys. That was a good um, input from you. So, so we're gonna wrap up this meeting, and um, hopefully, in the next monthly meeting, hopefully, we're gonna help each other and um, to improve our HCAP score, especially patient satisfaction. So, uh, good, good. thank you guys again. Um, I'll see you next month for our meeting. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.